Joining me now are three of the best political analysts in the country, Republican strategist and CNN contributor Ed Rollins. Ed served as White House political director under President Reagan. Democratic strategist, CNN contributor Robert Zimmerman, and syndicated columnist and CNN contributor Miguel Perez. And Miguel is also a professor of journalism at Lehman College in New York. Gentlemen, always a pleasure. Thank you. Let's start with uh, the bad news and, sure. and your interpretation of the uh, jobless numbers. Unemployment, 8.5%, 13 million Americans out of work. Ed, um, what do you make of it? Well, the scary part of unemployment figures is it, it takes a long period, even after recession ends, for those numbers to turn around. Uh, I was in the White House, I just left the White House to run Reagan's campaign when they went the high mark in 83. And it's a very scary thing because not only does 8.5% people unemployed, there's another 10 or 15% worried about losing their jobs. It's a real psychological damage when you see someone next to you who's lost their job or someone in your neighborhood lost their job. So all the stuff that's going on is, 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 is not as important as getting our workers back It's to work. extraordinarily worrisome and, and people underemployed too. Miguel, um, you know, there's really no way of also telling if this is the bottom or not. Not at all, but you know, it's, uh, there are people predicting that the unemployment rate could get, go, uh, go down as far as 10%. Uh, so, you know, it's still uh, by the end of the year. So. You know, it, it's not totally surprising that things have gotten as bad as, as they have because we, we've expected it. Now, as Ed said, the last thing to recover in a recovery period is the jobless rate. So, you know, let's hope that other things are beginning to recover and that the jobless rate will follow. We you know, have seen a lot of, uh, sorry to interrupt, but we've seen a lot of activity out of Washington, uh, a lot of sure. big picture activity. Do you think any of it will look, work? This pe look, these pessimistic numbers, these dire numbers that we're seeing in terms of joblessness. Now we also see one out, of every, every, one out of every 10 Americans is receiving food stamps. This is the third month in five, the last five months that we've set a record now for food stamp recipients. That plus expected continued job loss, that, that kind of, uh, those kinds of reports can be paralyzing. Yet we're beginning to see, and it's still not a, a de you can't call it a definitive trend, but you're still, you're starting to see some progress made. Uh, we're seeing, in fact, construction, in fact, begin to emerge, uh, re-emerge. Now, that could be seasonal, but we're seeing some growth in terms of construction and housing sales. Uh, the um, decline of auto sales has slowed a bit. So you're seeing some level, you're seeing some progress, maybe you're seeing the stock market over 8,000. We have a long way to go. I'm not saying mm -hmm. that we're, we're there, but clearly there are moments that we're seeing signs of potential improvement. And I think that's important to keep our eye on uh, I, in fact, we're seeing a light at the end of the tunnel, and it's not a train coming at us. I think it's some progress. Well, it's, it's certainly important to look at the upside as well as the downside in these sorts of yeah. situations. I, gentlemen, I'd like to move on to uh, international affairs because North Korea is very much on the radar this week um, with their intended launch. And President Obama actually spoke quite forcefully, finally um, sent a strong message to North Korea. Let's listen to it for a moment. Should North Korea decide to take this action, we will work uh, with all interested parties in the international community to take appropriate steps uh, to let North Korea know that uh, it can't uh, threaten uh, the safety and security of uh, other countries with impunity. You know, in advance of the statement, we've had a lot of conversation about talks and six-party talks and, and dialogue, and it, this seems to be, to me, a bit of a departure, Robert. Well, I think it's a bit of a departure from the past eight years. And one of the great uh, benefits of uh, Barack Obama's great success, and I say this not as a Democrat, but as, a, as an American, uh, from the G20 talks, is that America has now reestablished its credibility in the diplomatic community. And I thought the most critical part of what President Obama said was the idea of working with other parties to bring Korea, North Korea back into the six-party talks, as opposed to the kind of saber-rattling saber rhetoric of go it alone that has not succeeded in the past. As our uh, president is in Washington this evening, Miguel, your assessment of his uh, G20 uh, performance and also the, uh, the in, uh, schedule that he, he faces in Europe and, and how he's doing. Well, he did wonderful. I think he did a great job. I'm very impressed with his position when he spoke about, you know, Al-Qaeda. And he said, listen, just because I'm president, he told the Europeans, just because I'm president of the United States doesn't mean Al-Qaeda is going away. That was a very strong message that he needed to deliver. When he spoke about, you know, the anti-American feelings in Europe and how we needed to deal with those things, 
Uh, I think he was very forceful and very strong in those statements, and it was, uh, it was uh, what we needed to hear from the President of the United States. You know, here's a liberal president going to Europe, but speaking in very strong terms. You know, he also showed a very human side, uh, and in fact, uh, when asked in a town hall a situation what uh, he uh, basically, uh, if he had regrets about running for president, um, President Obama actually had a very candid, sort of charming comment. I'd like to listen to that if we can. It used to be when I came to Europe that I could just wander down to a cafe and sit and have some wine and watch people go by. Now I'm in hotel rooms all the time. <laughs> and I have security around me all the time. And, and so just, you know, you, losing that ability to, to uh, just take a walk, you know, that, that is something that, uh, that is frustrating. You know, it's interesting, um, be, watch what you wish for, but also um, being this personal in, in this sort of setting. Well, he's, Ed, he's, a great, he's a great personality, and obviously that showed uh, throughout this performance, and that's what it very much was. Uh, I think the critical thing here is he has now negotiated, he's going to have two major summits with China and the Russians. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think anyone should underestimate the Russians. Uh, we've sat down with them before, uh, and we don't know whether it's Putin or who's running the country, but when you start giving up nuclear weapons and you start basically uh, being called comrade by a Russian doesn't necessarily mean that there it's a whole new game there. Uh, the Russians have shown a, a tendency to, to not play very well. That's with, right. With their you friends. know, there was a great discussion about Medvedev and, and uh, Obama and, and the relationship there. Um, we uh, would, I would like to just get to um, the Justice Department dropping all the charges against uh, the former Alaskan Senator Ted Stevens. Ted Stevens is a long time, um, long time friend of mine, and, and, I, and I think a great injustice was done to him, and, and I'm glad that Eric Holder, I applaud what he has done in the sense of throwing or not attempting to prosecute this again. The absurdity now is talking about uh, the senator who was elected uh, uh, resigning and all the rest of it. I mean, that's, that's all frivolous. Uh, uh, Stevens had an injustice done. He might have won re-election if it hadn't been for this, but we move on. That's now, life. special election in this instance, Robert? Even, it is an outrage what happened to Senator Stevens. He lost for all the wrong reasons. It was no, there's no question that what, uh, what he faced in the Department of Justice was an outrageous abuse of power, and I applaud the Attorney General for, for his investigation. But equally outrageous is the Republican Party's hypocrisy that they now won a special election after the votes have been counted. Where were they in 2000 when they led the fight to block the votes from being counted in Florida and went to the U.S. Supreme Court to stop the votes from being counted? And that's how we chose a president. Robert Miguel, is, let, sorry. Uh, sorry. You know, it's okay. You, Robert, is sorry, still, Ed. Robert is still bitter. I keep telling him they lost five to four. <laughs> the votes were there counted a, there. Were counted. Let's let Miguel have I, I really don't think there should be a special election in Alaska. That's the bottom line. It's <laughs> too ridiculous to suggest that now they should have another election. Okay, gentlemen. Ed Rollins, Robert Zimmerman, Miguel Perez, thank you. Thank you. And still ahead, heroes. And tonight we have the story of a Marine honored for his outstanding bravery in battle. Also up next, why your home could be making you sick. We'll have a special report on the dangerous new threat to your health from communist China. Stay with us.